Hi, it's Kernetex here with a video about a utility called Ventoy, which is a tool designed to help boot multiple ISO or disk images off of a USB device. Uh, I thought what I'd do to start off with is to show you the actual tool in use first and then go through how to um, download, install and update it as well. So I discovered this about a year ago and uh, in fact just over a year ago and I've been using it more and more so I thought it would be beneficial to share it on the video. But basically what happens when you boot the utility off a of USB is you get a screen like this with a listing of all the disk images uh, that you've installed yourself and as you can see it will quite easily cope with Windows images as well as Linux and images as well and also as I found out this morning I've got a couple of these top two here are actually hard disk images that are also compressed with XZ and it's found them and they do actually boot as well so um, it does a little bit more than what it says on the website. The website claims that it does um, ISOs, uh, virtual hard disk images, Windows installation media files, WIM files, um, maybe a couple of others. We'll see that later anyway. So uh, it doesn't doesn't actually say that it will boot real disk images, but clearly it does. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I can uh, go into one of these, for example, let's try the Windows 11 one. Uh, this is a little bit slow to boot to start off with, but it will get there eventually. You get this little window here with a few options. Generally, only find and need the normal mode. And we'll just wait for that. There's the Windows logo. It looks like it's locked up, but it isn't actually. It has actually um, started to boot. So we'll just wait for that. It's a tiny little image that you basically install to a USB device. Um, and it just helps you having to continually rewrite ISOs, um, which if it's on a flash device will obviously wear it out sooner. Uh, it means you don't have to spend time uh, waiting for the new image to be rewritten or have multiple uh, USB devices with individual ISOs on them. I mean, you can see the list there, there's probably about a dozen ISOs there. And I'd have to have uh, maybe 12 USB sticks or continually be rewriting um, some of them to, to be, allow me to boot any of them. Uh, so there's the Windows 11 that started. I'm not going to go any further because it all, you know, the Windows installation is quite simple. Um, I don't want it to go doing anything else. I suppose I could get to the partitioning bit. And you can see it is actually working. Um, it might not actually get that far because this machine is quite old to have Windows 11 put on it. But you can see it's working perfectly well. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I won't go any further with that. I'll just quit it and I'll reboot into Ventoy again and just show you quickly one of the Linux ISOs booting. So you'll have to bear with the screen. This, the uh, capture device takes a little while to catch up with any mode changes. So there's the Ventoy boot screen again. Let's try the let's try the uh, testing. Normal mode again. I've found that works fine. Uh, right, let me just force a refresh here. Yep. So there's the Debian 12. Um, this is still testing, by the way. It's not been released. I don't think it gets released till Saturday, I think it is. Another few days. Uh, but if I press into there, yep, it's starting the install. And you can see there's the install menu for Debian. If you used it before, you'll recognize it. 
And you can see just go through and it would install Debian if I carried on going through. So what I shall do now is I'll boot into the um, an operating system, uh, show it being installed and how to configure it with ISOs and so on, and then reboot again and show you that being built, or, or booting rather. I'll also show you um, a problem I came across, which I've also, so when I was trying to find out what caused the problem, I've seen other people have had it before with different machines, so it's not, although it's probably uncommon, it's not that uncommon, the fact that several people have come across it, and it's nothing to do with Ventor, it's just the way that some biases are out of date or haven't been written properly. So what I shall do is I'll reboot here. And remove the USB so it doesn't boot. And I'll just boot into the operating system on this machine. Okay, so while that's uh, loading the desktop, um, what you need is a spare USB that you can write the image to. And the way it works is that you download, well, there's several ways of installing. You can install it through Windows, install it through Linux, or just use an ISO file. Um, I found the ISO files the easiest because you just basically write it to the USB. Um, and that's it, it's done. I haven't tried the Windows installation, but I've tried the Linux installation once. And depending on the operating system, you may need to, or the version of the distribution you're using, you may need to install some additional tools to get it to work. It's basically a script. Um, and I found it a little bit fiddly. It wasn't too complicated, but a little bit fiddly. I just find the ISO so much simpler. Um, the only downside is it's a lot bigger download. I think the Windows and Linux downloads are something in the region of 20 uh, megabytes, whereas the ISO is almost 200 megabytes, so it's quite a difference. So I'll just plug in another USB. Now, the USB that I booted from at the start of the video was just a, a 64 gigabyte flash device. What I've just plugged in now is a 500 gigabyte hard disk USB. Um, so you, you can get an idea that, you know, with 500 gigabytes, you could have maybe 100 ISOs potentially um, to, to boot from. Uh, so it shows you the sort of power that this tool actually uh, could unleash, um, you know, rather than having, you know, 100 separate USB um, devices or even just those images and then continually rewrite, rewriting the flash device, as I say, would uh, wear it out quite quite soon if you're rewriting often. So anyway, this is the uh, homepage, www.ventoy.net. Takes to this page. There's lots of information on here. There's lots of troubleshooting and FAQs. Um, so it's a good page. I, I don't know if it's Chinese or Hong Kong or Hong Kongese or, or what, but um, certainly some of this I don't understand. I don't know if that's an advert or what that is up there, but anyway, uh, luckily the website itself is in English. So if you go to downloads, and there's the three different releases. So there's a Windows release, as I say, that's only 15 meg. A Linux release, which is just under 20 meg. And the ISO release, as I say, which is just under 200 meg. And that, that I say, I find is so much easier. When you actually go to download this, it takes you to a GitHub page where you can download it and some information there and the SHA-256 file uh, checksums. So you can check those signatures against what you've downloaded to ensure it's uh, downloaded correctly. So that's the ISO file there. Just You only need that file if you're building with the ISO. 
or installing with the ISO. So I've already downloaded that. So what I'm going to do is to get a prompt up and go to the downloads. And there's the ISO there that I've already downloaded. I've already checked some of it, so I know it's correct. I need to find out what device the hard disk is. It's SDB there. So I'm going to use DD in file is this Ventoy file. Out file is SDB. And set a block size of say 64K is quite reasonable. And status equals progress so I can see how it's going when you're using DD always double check the destination the out file you don't want to be writing to a live disk for example I don't want to write to SDA I'll overwrite the operating system on there if you've got multiple disks you don't want to be writing overwriting data or anything with Ventoy so just take time to double check so I'll start that off And yeah, it's actually writing. Oh, it's done it. Okay, so I suppose because it was such a small image, it didn't put the status out straight away. So that's written. You can see it's actually uh, been recognized by Plasma, KDE Plasma. So what I'm going to do is mount and open that. And what you'll see is, well, if I do an F disk, actually, probably be better. you get these two partitions here and they're at the moment they're pretty useless at the moment what we've got to do is to get this installed so this hasn't been installed at the moment and the way to install that is to reboot and boot into that image to get the installation completed so it's quite clever it basically effectively overwrites itself it does an in place install it, it doesn't need any further space other than where it's installed. So let's restart the machine. Okay, so you get this uh, grub come up. It downloads its own, well, it says it's downloading, it's actually just loading it off the disk when it says downloading. Let's just check that the screen, no, it's still right into the disk, it's booting the image. Okay, and that's the setup window we get. And there's not a lot to do here. Um, just double check that the device is the device you want to write to. And yes, it is. It's a 512 gigabyte disk, which is USB. So that's fine. By default, it won't list um, the... I think it won't list any other device other than the device that this installation has been booted from. There are some options to expose other devices, but it's uh, obviously safer not to. It tells you what's in the package. If you're doing an update, it would show you the version that's already on the device. Well, it's, a, it's an empty device. So I'm just going to click install. And it warns you that it's going to format the device. Do you want to continue? Uh, so again, you may want to double check. And then its own double check. It asks you once again, just to be sure. So it says, yep, it's been installed OK. And now you can see that it's read that the device has got the same version as what's on the um, installation media. So all I need to do here is to click that cross. I'll unplug it because I don't want it to boot at the moment. I need to put something on there to actually boot from. So I'll just boot into my operating system again. OK, 
Okay. Now, rather than copy a load of huge ISO files onto the USB, I've already downloaded a net install version of Debian, which is quite small. It's only two or three hundred megabytes, I think. So I'm only going to copy that to the disk just to save time. When the desktop comes up. Okay, so I don't actually need that. What I'll do, so if I plug the disk in again, the KDE should recognize it eventually. Yeah, mount and open it. And you can see that, I don't know if you saw there, it said it's 500 or nearly 500 megabytes free, or gigabytes free. In fact, you can see there's about 450 gigabytes free. Uh, in fact, I'll get this up again. I'll show you what he's done to it. It's reconfigured those two partitions so that the first partition is all the free space on the device. And the second partition is the actual uh, partition with the uh, Ventoy code and image that gets booted. So basically, SDB1 is free for you to use. You can put whatever you like on there. When Ventoy runs, it will scan the files that are on there. So obviously, the more files there are, the longer it will take to scan. But yes, you can put anything that you like on there. Um, and it will create that menu at the beginning dynamically out of uh, the images that it finds on there. So what I'm going to do is to copy this uh, ISO file that I downloaded earlier. Oh, it's, okay, it's just under 400 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. I'll copy that onto the Ventoy partition. Yeah, that's done. And I'll remove that USB device so that the data is written correctly. So it's just syncing it at the moment, just flushing the cache and writing it to the disk. And it's done. So what I'm going to do now is reboot. I'll leave it plugged in this time so it should boot to the device. And I'll show you the problem that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this particular PC has. Um, and as I say, th this, this particular machine, as you can see, is a, it's actually a Lenovo Think Center. I've seen on the internet that it happens to, I've certainly seen people complain that it happens with Dells, but I've also um, think I've seen people, sorry, not Dells, with HPs. I think I've seen people mention Dells, but certainly uh, HP, some HP machines. And this is the problem that happens. You get this VT loading message and it just hangs and it doesn't work. And initially I thought this was a problem with the USB device or BIOS settings. Um, I couldn't fathom it out because it booted on other machines, but not on this machine. Um, and it turns out what it is, the, there is a problem with the machine and it's a problem to do with the BIOS and the BIOS cannot boot uh, a device where the partition is greater than 128 uh, gigabytes. So because I've booted originally at the beginning of the video, I showed you the um, Ventoy booting with Windows and uh, Linux images. That was only on a 64 gigabyte USB device. I'm now on a 500 gigabyte USB device. The partition's gone over that 128 gigabyte and that's why it's not booting. So there is a workaround to this. There's no solution because it's basically a problem with the BIOS. Um, there's no further BIOS updates for this machine, unfortunately. That would be the only way of fixing it. Um, but apart from that, the, the, there is no other way um, other than a workaround. And what I'll do now is to show you what that workaround is. So I'm going to unplug the USB device, cycle the power on the PC. Yep, it's powered up again. And just wait through the operating system to boot. 
And um, what we'll have to do is to rewrite the um, Ventoy image to the disk. But when it comes to uh, installing uh, Ventoy, um, we need to just make some slight changes there to allow this uh, image, uh, this disk to boot on this particular computer. As I say, normally it would boot on any any other machine that I've got. Uh, it's just, just this particular one. Uh, it could be even this particular model. It's just down to the BIOS that, that's on the machine. Right, unfortunately the disk that's in the machine is just a mechanical disk, so that's why it's taking some time to load. Um, I have noticed, I've been testing the just as, as an aside, I've been testing the upcoming version of Debian, Debian 12 called Bookworm, and it seems to be a, the desktop seems to be a little bit slower than the previous version, so I'm, I'm not quite sure yet if that's KDE has got a bit fatter or if it's more um, uh, mitigations in the kernel that have been enabled at a slow machine down in general. I'm not quite sure yet, but um, it unfortunately, it does seem to be a, a tad slower. Okay, so there's the desktop again, so I need to rewrite that Ventoy image. So I go back to where the image was. There it is, F disk minus L just to check the assignments. Right, okay, I've plugged it in. So let's plug the disk in again. Okay, so it is SDB. So once again, let's recall that command. Yeah, the destination is the same. Always double check that and let that rewrite a new image. Okay, that's done. So now I need to reboot to install that. Now we wait for the Ventoy install image to boot. Okay. Yeah, so it's reading the um, kernel and the initrd off the disk at the moment. And then there'll be a slight pause while it actually runs the code. Okay, so it's loaded it off the disk. Okay, so there's the installation window again. So what we've got to do this time is to limit that first partition to be within the first 128 gigabytes of the disk. And what we do is go to option and then go to partition configuration. And here there's an option here to preserve some space at the end of the disk. So it's a 500 gigabyte disk. I need to make sure it's under 128. So roughly if I reserve 400 gigabytes, that means the partition will be approximately uh, 100 gig, or probably actually a little bit less than that. But for demonstration purposes, that's not a problem. If you wanted to allocate as much as possible, then obviously you'd have to calculate exactly what you could get away with. So here you can see now it says device minus 400 gig. So whatever's remainder is what the space is that's going to be used by Ventoy. So now let's install this. Double checked it. Yes, it is SDB I want. All good. So once again, we reboot. I'll unplug the disk when it started booting. I don't want to boot from it just yet. I want to actually put an image on there. Wait for Debian to load. Okay, here it goes.
Okay, got the desktop. I'm going to plug the Ventoy boot disk in again. And mount it. Okay, you can see it's empty. Now you can see there's only 65 gigabytes free, so um, yeah, maybe something like 375 gigabyte reserved would have been a, a better value to get another 30 or 40 gig out of this. But anyway, it shows that it's reconfigured it. Uh, in fact, let's do another F disk. And you can see that it's limited that first partition. And in fact, I believe that you can quite safely create another partition to use the unused space on that disk um, without interfering with uh, Ventoy. So if you did want to use that, you could possibly even use it to keep images effectively offline and just move them around outside of Ventoy, ready for booting into uh, Ventoy, because Ventoy will only actually look at this first partition uh, to get the uh, ISOs in its menu that it builds up at the beginning. So anyway, this, this will be obviously the first partition as it was before. I'm going to copy that ISO again. And it, you know, you can see how simple it is. You just download an ISO, copy it to the partition, and once it's written, it's ready to use. So let's do safely remove again. Wait for the cache to flush, write everything to the disk. Okay, that's done. And now I'm going to reboot. I'll leave the Ventoy USB boot plugged in, boot disk plugged in so that it will boot, the machine will boot from it. And hopefully when it comes up, we'll see that that Debian netinst image is listed. Okay, uh, there it is. It's, it's loaded up before the sync could, uh, the screen could sync up. Uh, so yes, there it is there. Um, sorry, I haven't got a cursor. There's no cursor at this point, but it's found that one ISO. Obviously, if there's other ISOs there, it would um, list those up as well. And if I press Enter to boot from it, get this menu up, always select Normal Mode, and... I'll resync the screen. There's the graphical installer menu. Or rather, the install menu. I've selected graphical install, so it should start the usual install process. Yep, there it is. Let's sync that up again. Yep, English, UK, British English. And you can see it's just running the installation as normal and I could go ahead and quite easily carry on and install Debian 11 as if it had been booted off a real CD or a real USB drive, a real USB ISO. So that's how that shows how useful Ventoy could be, especially if you're booting from different ISO images regularly. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. I always appreciate a thumbs up if you found the video to be of use. And welcome to uh, leave comments behind. I always look forward to comments, especially constructive ones. Thank you very much. Goodbye.